Hello and welcome to my class on the second part of uh, this blood supply of brain. In this part I will tell you about uh, vertebral artery and basilar artery. And together they form a vertebro basilar vascular system. So first let's have a look at vertebral artery. This vertebral artery arises from a uh, first part of subclavian artery now after its origin it runs upward in the region of neck and reaches to the region of posterior cranial fossa now this system is important because uh, it supply the very important region of the spinal cord mainly the upper part of the spinal cord brain stem cerebellum as well as the posterior part of the brain it's mainly the region of occipital lobes now anatomically uh, this vertebral artery is divided into four segments or four parts first uh, look at this image this first portion right from its origin from subclavian artery to the cervical vertebra where it enters into the this transverse foramina or foramenum transversarium of six cervical vertebra this portion is the first part or cervical part now it runs within the and this foramina or transverse foramina up to this uh, upper cervical region so this portion within the this foramina is known as vertebral part or second part now third part is sub occipital part where uh, it is present in the region of sub occipital triangle now here it exit through transverse foramina of atlas then it pierces the dura to enters into the cranial cavity now this distal segment within the cranial cavity after piercing the dura mater it enters into the subarachnoid space and this portion is the intracranial segments and in various segments it gives few branches but major branches they are seen in the intracranial segment in first segment it only gives few muscular branches in second segment it gives some of the meningeal branches and that is anterior meningeal artery and in third segment it gives rise to posterior meningeal arteries now the branches within the fourth part is important in fourth part that is intracranial segment it ascends anteriorly then laterally around the medulla look at uh, this green structure and in midline it uh, almost at the junction of the spons and medulla that is ponto medullary junction it forms basilar artery so base, this vertebral vertebral artery of both side joins to form basilar artery now this intracranial part of vertebral artery give five branches two spinal artery that is anterior and posterior spinal artery then one pica here you can see this posterior inferior cerebellar artery one medullary artery for supplying the adjoining region of medulla and meningeal artery first look at this anterior spinal artery so this vertebral artery of both side it gives a small branch and this two smaller branches they join to form a single anterior spinal artery in the same way 
posterior portion of the vertebral artery gives rise to posterior spinal artery but they do not unite and there are two separate posterior spinal now this pica or posterior inferior cerebellar artery is uh, the largest branch of uh, this fourth part of vertebral artery it arises near the lower end of olive and winds backwards around the medulla and then ascend to the pontomedullary junction look at this branch that is pica posterior now it also gives rise to this meningeal and medullary artery this meningeal artery are the small and supply the dura mater of the posterior cranial fossa while uh, this medullary artery are also small vessels which supply the medulla of lung now look at the basilar artery which is formed by the union of two vertebral artery and basilar artery again gives rise to five branches so these are the five branches first is ica or anterior inferior cerebellar artery second is internal auditory artery or labyrinthine artery third one is superior cerebellar artery fourth is posterior cerebellar artery and fifth one is small pontine arteries the first branch that is ica anterior inferior uh, cerebellar artery arises close to the lower border of pons i look at this region and it runs backwards then laterally usually uh, ventral to uh, the cranial nerve 7th and 8th which is located in this region then it forms a loop over the floccules of the cerebellum and then it reaches in the region of internal acoustic meatus now after exiting from the region of this internal acoustic meatus it supply the anterolateral portion of the inferior surface of cerebellum this labyrinthine artery it is long and slender branch which arises either from a basilar artery or from anterior inferior cerebellar artery so it is either direct branch from this basilar artery or from the ica it runs along with the this eighth cranial nerve and it enters into the internal auditory meatus to supply the inner ear so it reaches to the internal ear via internal acoustic meatus along with this eighth cranial nerve and this labyrinthine artery is one of the end artery next is superior cerebellar artery the superior cerebellar artery arises uh, close to the this upper border of pons now it runs laterally and it is present below the third cranial nerve then it winds round the cerebral peduncle now it reaches to the superior surface of cerebellum and it supplies the region of upper surface of cerebellum now the superior cerebellar artery arises close to the superior border of pons it runs laterally then it winds round the cerebral peduncle now it reaches to the superior surface of cerebellum and it is supplying the region of the upper surface of cerebellum now the posterior cerebral artery it passes laterally and it is parallel to the this superior cerebellar artery it curves around the midbrain so it winds around around the midbrain to reach the medial surface of cerebral hemisphere beneath the splenium of the corpus callosum now this posterior cerebral artery gives up four branches
so it gives rise to mainly the branches for temporal lobe and occipital lobe this posterior cerebral artery it is divided into various parts or segments this p1 segment look at this posterior cerebral artery this p1 segment it originates from this uh, basilar artery till the junction of this posterior communicating artery this portion is the posterior cerebral artery p1 segment now p2 segment is distal to the posterior communicating artery now the terminal portion that is the mainly the terminal portion which gives rise to cortical branches and this p1 and p2 region gives rise to central branches so this p1 segment gives posterior thalamo perforators to supply the region of thalamus and p2 segment gives rise to this thalamo geniculate artery and posterior choroidal artery which supply the choroid plexus of the ventricles now terminal portion of this posterior cerebral artery gives rise to uh, this temporal branches so it can be either anterior temporal or posterior temporal or occipital temporal so initially it divide into medial and lateral branch so this lateral branch gives rise to this three temporal branches that is anterior posterior and occipital temporal now this medial branch uh, is dividing into parieto occipital and calcarine branch this parieto occipital branch runs toward the parieto occipital sulcus while calcarine branch which is also known as calcarine artery passes posterior in the calcarine sulcus and look at the image here it is this calcarine artery now look at this image showing the blood supply to the cerebellum which you have already seen this three cerebellar artery that is anterior inferior cerebellar posterior inferior cerebellar and superior cerebellar so the superior cerebellar artery supplying the upper portion of the cerebellum this ica supplying the this medial portion and this pica supplying the lower portion so this medial portion or middle lobe of this cerebellum is supplied by the all three artery that is superior ica and now now blood supply to the spinal cord the spinal cord is supplied by two groups of artery one is spinal artery that is branch from the vertebral artery so there is one anterior spinal artery and two posterior spinal artery that is right and left posterior spinal artery this artery travels in the subarachnoid space and sends branches into the spinal cord and they form anastomosis via this anterior and posterior segmental arteries which enters the spinal cord at the various point along its length so there are two groups of arteries supplying the spinal cord one is this spinal artery from the vertebral and segmental arteries because uh, this spinal artery from the vertebral artery they are only supplying 
up to the region of cervical segment and below this cervical segment it is supplemented by this segmental medullary arteries now segmental artery they may be either from this intercostal artery or lumbar artery or lateral sacral artery now look at this image here it is uh, spinal artery so look at the location of anterior spinal artery here it is to posterior spinal artery they are forming anastomosis and here it is the radicular artery and it is running along this roots of the spinal nerves and supplementing the this anterior and posterior spinal artery now this anterior spinal artery supplies the anterior two third of the spinal cord look at this image while the posterior spinal artery is supplying the this posterior one third portion of the spinal now one of the uh, branch of this anterior radicular arteries at the level of uh, this l1 and l2 vertebral level is largest and this largest uh, radicular artery is known as this artery of Adam Kevich. So this named artery is important, usually asked in MCQs. Now come to the clinical importance. Uh, due to uh, impaired blood flow or decreased blood flow to the spinal cord can lead to the cord infraction which can lead to the paraplegia now look at this two region or remember this two important vertebral level which is vulnerable to the infraction the weakest area which is vulnerable to the infraction in the region of territory of anterior spinal artery is at the level of T4 and L1 while in the territory of posterior spinal artery this region of T1, T2 and T3 is most vulnerable area for infraction. Now this is all about uh, part 2 about the vertebrobacillar system. So try to remember the 5 branches of vertebral artery and their course and 5 branches of bacillar artery and their course. Thank you.